Hi, this is Steve, and I want to welcome you back to another episode of the Tech Leader Talk podcast. Are you looking for ways to accelerate and innovate your tech startup? Well, you're in the right place, because that's what I'm discussing today with Zach Weisfeld. He's the vice president and general manager of Intel Ignite, which is Intel Corporation's early stage startup accelerator. Zach has more than 25 years of experience as an executive and a serial entrepreneur. And on the discussion today, he shares his experience in helping startups with funding, mentoring, and C-level executive support. His experience includes founding and leading tech startups, corporate entrepreneurship, and mentoring tech founders. So during our discussion, Zach talks about some of the challenges that are faced by tech founders and the importance of mental resilience in the tech industry. He also explains uh, some information about the Intel Ignite program and its unique approach to supporting startups and providing mentoring. He also talks about the goals of Intel Ignite and the criteria that they use to select startups for each of the cohorts that they create. So I love this conversation with Zach, and I'm sure you're going to get some valuable tips uh, that you can use in your own business right away. So let's get through the discussion with Zach. Hi, Zach. Thanks for joining me on the podcast today. Thank you very much for having me, Steve. So first question I always ask, and it's the one that the audience loves to hear about, what's your journey? How did you get started or get to what you're doing today with this uh, early stage uh, Intel startup accelerator? Yeah, so I've been an entrepreneur for most of my life. So about 30 years of building companies, startups from you know bootstrapping to raising $120 million, selling to Google close to nothing, uh, last uh, exit uh, about four and a half years ago. So three, three um, nice exits. Um, but uh, but also been a corporate entrepreneur. So um, mid 2018, I left Microsoft for the third time. I used to run an organization called Microsoft for Startups. Mm-hmm. So uh, 110 countries, somewhere around 500 million dollars a year spent on ecosystem development. Mm-hmm. And I founded and, and started the Microsoft Accelerator: uh, Bangalore, Beijing, Shanghai, Berlin, London, Paris, Seattle, Sydney, and Tel Aviv. And then. Um, Mid-2019, the former CEO of Intel, uh, uh, Bob Swan, reached out and and asked me if I could join Intel and build something similar to what I built at Microsoft. So uh, start that startup mojo again um, at at Intel, um, you know, parallel to our great investment fund, but but to do something with a a different intention and a different uh, operating model. So that's what brought me here. And um, we're probably going to talk a little bit later about the accelerator as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I assume your experience at Microsoft helped with creating this, this new thing at Intel, but what about your work as a serial technology entrepreneur and, and those experiences? How's all this kind of coming together to, to really make this Intel Ignite a, a powerful yeah. resource? Yeah, good, great, great question. Thank you. I think it, it's interesting. We're just we're working with a business school in the UK, London that are analyzing the whole phenomenon of accelerators and specifically corporate accelerators. And what you see throughout history is most of them actually fail. And part of the reason that they found that they fail is because they're usually very transactional, right? You're going to buy my stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to help you with whatever, go to market, whatever. What we pride ourselves is that we're, we're different than that model because it's mostly founders for founders. So most of the people I hire to run the programs around the world are people that have led tech startups themselves. They've been hiring, firing, um, um, uh, uh, raised funding, um, exited. So went through the whole process. I I think it's very hard to mentor, properly mentor a tech founder, uh, tech startup founder without actually being there and and uh, being in the trenches and knowing what this means uh it's not a textbook it's it's not it's not a yeah, we don't run an mba program or or even not an executive mba program we, we run a founder for founder program and that's where my personal background 
um, is, is critical and bring that to bear with the work with the startups. I always tell my managing directors around the world is, is for any session they want to do, anything they want to do with the startups, they should put back their CEO, startup CEO hat and say, would I want to go and do that myself? Would I want to uh, want to spend the time um, and effort to do that? And if the answer is not sure, then don't. Don't do it. So, so this is where, um, or I think this this is critical for the work I do today for Intel, and it was the same when I did it for Microsoft. Okay, yeah, experience is a a great teacher and uh, creates great great teachers, of course. So- but again, it's it's beyond just experience, and I think again, going back to what what this business school found, Bayes Business School found is that um, what they found it's different than our model. Is, they say it comes uh, down to three fundamental issues. It's trust, transparency, and empathy. And okay. when you create that yeah. with the founders, it's based on the fact that they actually see you as someone that, you know, went that their path just a few years before and, and could really carry it through with them, right? So that's that's that empathy and, and, um, and trust comes from that uh, uh, piece of actually doing that, being there, understanding exactly what they're going through. Okay. So I know you you talked a lot about the importance of mentorship. So is that kind of part of the, those three factors, part of that foundation of a good mentorship relationship? Absolutely, and I think uh, unfortunately the the mentor mentorship is is uh, overused and abused, and and many cases um, someone that's called a mentor is not really a mentor um, um, for us. We have two kind of people. We have experts, which are great in their field, but they may not be mentors. We have mentors. Mentors usually are founders that uh, uh, want to pay paid forward and work with other founders. And um, um, th- these are the industry mentors. And then we have also mentors from within Intel. So we divide the mentorship world into two uh, uh there, there are two distinct categories of mentorship one is industry mentorship which is these serial entrepreneurs the other one are intel lead mentors which usually builds a small army of of four to five experts around them as they work with a startup it's a weekly engagement could be a few hours a week um for 12 weeks of the program and they get as deep as possible um and help the company with go to market and IP and um, finance and uh, culture and um, co-founder challenges and governance, almost every aspect of the business. So okay. super, super critical. I think that the good mentor goes a long way. One of the startups I had at Microsoft, uh, a unicorn called Apps Flyer. So when they raised the last round, about $220 million, I got this big flower bouquet saying we could have done without you. And and uh, Oren, the CEO, an interesting thing he told me then was that two of his advisors today have been mentors I've engaged him with 11 years before. Mm-hmm. right? And that relationship kept going through, even though they're a big you know, unicorn and and um, he still gets their advice as as uh, um, as he, he, he works and goes forward. So this mm-hmm. is critical critical piece is having yeah. a good mentor. Yep. Those are valuable relationships. So you've mentioned that in some, in some of your posts and some of the, the articles I've seen that you've written, that mentorship is important to companies of all sizes. So how does it vary from if you're working with a small startup versus if you get to, up to a larger corporation like, like Intel internally? How, how does that change? How does a mentor system or relationship vary in those sizes? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a question of what's the content of that mentorship relationship. So with okay. startups, um, again, the external mentors are all about the creation of that fragile entity that's called startup. It's it's not an easy thing to to do by yourself or even a small team of founders. So having mm-hmm. an experienced person to that has the context, carries the context from week to week, and help you through this process is super critical. Uh, on the other hand, when you're in the corporate world, you have different, you know, could have different kind of mentors. I'm personally a mentor for, you know, multiple people inside Intel on their personal development, on their leadership development. Um, mentors are are people that uh, have you in mind, um, have the context, carry the context, and and 
can together with you figure out the best outcome for that mentor mentee relationship and and um and they have a they have an interest for this work uh, working okay interesting so you said that this uh, intel Int intel ignite is a something new that that you've been brought on to create what's the goal you kind of from intel's perspective um for the program what do they hope to accomplish yeah, so we exist for four and a half years now, um, and we came to help in basically four different areas. First, of, first, um, and, and maybe I'll, I'll step up, uh, step back here. I, I used to have this slide where I had all these startup logos that makes some of our largest tech companies go. So if you look at uh, Google Business, you know, based on in you know, Waze and YouTube and even the ads business and and um, uh, maps and all that, you know, based on startup acquisitions, right? And you could look similarly at Microsoft and Amazon, et cetera. I now have one logo on a slide, which is OpenAI and the change that it made on Microsoft versus Google, right? Mm -hmm. so, so first of all, large tech corporations have no choice other than working with startups. It's strategically important for their existence. So the first reason that we exist is to make Intel relevant in the startup ecosystem. Okay. So yes, we have a corporate venture fund for 30 years and they're doing an awesome work as, uh, as venture investors with strategic intent in mind, uh, but we're trying to go much broader. So we see about 2,500 startups a year that we uh, select from um, and we accelerate about 80 startups a year. So we get okay. to a pretty broad spectrum of companies um, and uh, um, and the purpose is, is, again, making sure that Intel is relevant and is an active part of the startup ecosystem. So this is one thing. The second thing is how do we drive learnings, technical learnings into the company based on what we see the work with the startups? So what can we learn about markets, new markets, tools that are using? So Intel is building this um, developer cloud, and we brought in a few of our companies to be design partners of Intel. Again, not the other way around. Not Intel is their design partner. They're Intel design partners yeah. or our cloud services because they're born to the cloud companies and they know exactly what they need for their success in the future. Mm -hmm. um, we did an acquisition of a company called Granulate that um, uh, came throughout our first batch at Ignite. We have uh, invested it in four companies, et cetera. So what could we teach about the world of technology to people at Intel? This is uh, this is the, the that learning we have a repository of data that we we collect and understand about the world. So that's mm -hmm. the technical learning. Um, the third thing is about um, our branding and our employee em employer branding because um, we have about three hundred mentors from within Intel that operate uh, uh, with Ignite and and help the startups. It changes the way they think about themselves and about the company. Mm -hmm. That connects to the fourth thing, which is culture change. We want to help drive culture change within the company. So through these 300 ambassadors, 300 mentors and experts from within Intel, um, they change the way they work. Um, you know, we had uh, I had a, my boss, which is the CTO of Intel, Greg Lavender, um, met with uh, about 20 of our mentors, and one of them told him that she divides her 20 years at Intel to the 18 before Ignite and the two since she started <laughs> um, mentoring Ignite. But it's changed the way she looks at the market and mm -hmm. at her work. So, so these are the things that we, we're trying to solve for. Okay. So along those lines, something you mentioned that that how Intel, that the larger corporation, is learning from the startups and, and being being in that that world. You've mentioned that that you think deep tech startups will surpass uh, large enterprises in solving the world's problems. What? Why is that? So I don't know if, if deep tech startups by themselves will surpass. I think okay. that um, there are new ways, new fresh ways of doing things. Look, again, I'll go back to what, what OpenAI and, and uh, um, large language models have, have done to our world just in the past couple of years. Right? It changes a lot of things that we do, and it's Perfect. transformational, right? So uh, this is, again, just one example. There are many, many, many examples of how Tiny startups are changing the way we look, look at WhatsApp, right? It completely changed the way people communicate. Um, so uh, I think that that startups have this freedom to think in a new way 
of world challenges, but, uh, but they need to partner. They need to partner with large companies in order to scale, usually. Again, it's OpenAI with Microsoft, and it was WhatsApp with, with uh, Meta, uh, Facebook at the time. It's, it's, it, you can't do it alone. And I would say to both for both sides, um, uh, the large tech corporates can't do it alone, and these startups can't do it alone. So we always talk about how do we co-create the future together with these disruptors. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so when Intel Ignite is looking for candidates uh, for the your accelerator program, what are some of your key criteria to yeah. to make it a a win for for both sides? Yeah. So the first criteria will sound like any other investor criteria. So first of all, um, they have to have uh, to got at least a one million dollar funding. Our average funding when they start is about five five to six million, but but there's like this is like the the baseline. Um, we're looking for a great team, strong team of founders. Uh, best if there's a if there's a good mix of of capabilities. Uh, we're looking for IP. Do they do something different, unique that that uh, others are not doing or doing in a different way? Yeah. Is the issue the problem they're solving is big enough? You know, there are multiple features and stuff. We're trying to find the ones that are doing something significant and big. And then uh, we, we taking into account the team, the idea, the IP, all of that, do we think they could be financially successful in doing what they're uh, they're doing? So this is like almost any other investor. The one thing that we add on top of that is we're trying to assess how coachable they are. Mm -hmm. um, because the program is so mentor focused, most so mentor heavy, if they're not coming to learn, then it's a waste of time. Now we find some we throughout the selection process, which is a long three months process, we find some amazing companies where the founder says, "Look, I, I don't need your help. I I just need you as a customer, or I need you for my go to market to validate me, etc." And we may find the right people inside Intel that could help them, but they may not fit the uh, Ignite as an accelerator. We really need them committed to. Uh, to the learning process. Okay. Yep. Interesting. <clears throat> what you, you mentioned, I saw somewhere else that said that all companies should consider creating a startup accelerator. And you mentioned some of the goals and the benefits for Intel, but what is there anything else that, that would be the, the big reasons that a, if, if a larger corporation doesn't have a startup accelerator yet, that they should consider adding it and, and get the benefits from that? I think that I usually say that companies should stay away from doing this because oh, okay. it's no, it's it, because it's 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 tough to do it to do it the right way. It's not that it's not very cheap, and you need to have the right structure in order to to make that work. Um, uh, you need to um, um, have the right team, and if you look, Ignite works in pods. Every pod. Uh, has uh, basically five people in it, the managing director, which is a serial entrepreneur, um, a CTO, which is a very strong technical lead, a hardware software system, someone very strong at uh, that uh, part. He's the product and technical guy. There's um, an ops person that runs the day-to-day -day operation and site. Uh, there's a deal flow manager that constantly looks out for new startups. And then there's a value creation person that help startups get business either within Intel or outside of Intel. That's a big emphasis also the program. How do you get business opportunities? Um, so first of all, you need to have the right, right set of people. Second, you need to have the right funding. Um, there's a super interesting article that came out on Techstars uh, and, and what happened to Techstars. I think Techstars is trying to, to kind of reinvent themselves. And, and um, you know, when you're starting to cater to multiple partners that are helping you fund or you kind of lose the eye on the on the ball, which is start as startups themselves. And how do you help the startups first and foremost? So, um, so the second thing is the funding, making sure that you're funded properly and and uh, um, and you're driving the right model. And the third thing is make sure you have the right sponsorship. So um, in Microsoft, it, it used to be Satya Nadella when he was the head of a server and tool division, in my division. Then later on, it was Scott Guthrie that uh, when Satya went over to be the CEO, Scott took over the um, Cloud and Enterprise and Azure, uh, and, and they've been amazing sponsors for this work as a strategic work. Mm -hmm. uh, 
at Intel, it used to be Bob Swan, the CEO. Now it's Greg Lavender, the CTO, which is a phenomenal uh, technology leader and that sees the strategic value of a program like this. Super critical to have someone at the C-level of the company that would be um, the sponsor. Otherwise, it's very hard for these programs to keep, keep alive because uh, okay. it's a strategic tool. Um, so again, there, there, you can do that. All, all of these things that just you need to have the right structure, the right kind of people. Uh, uh, and if you have all of that, then the outcomes I think are phenomenal for the company. Again, uh, for Microsoft, it was super, super valuable uh, for many years. And and at Intel, we won like the, the top award you can win at Intel, something called IAA, which is the Intel Appreciation Award that the CEO gives every year to like the the team that built the next chip. Uh, the, you know, the team that brought in the next billion dollar business or whatever. Mm-hmm. So Ignite, only after two years, were awarded with with IAA by by Pat Gelsinger, the CEO. So we, oh. we make an impact. Yeah, I, I would say so. You, a slightly different topic, you know, you've talked some about mental resilience in the tech industry. What, why is that important? And kind of how do you implement that in, in your daily work? So I think it's very important. I think many startups fail based uh, just because um, either the founders are not making it as a team or um, to be the founder in themselves just collapse through the process. Uh, it's it's a very hard journey. And um, uh, there's a great, uh, uh, one of the best people to read uh, is uh, a U.S. psychiatrist named uh, Michael Freeman. He's one of the only people actually that writes about this this space of mental health and founders. So it's fascinating to read how founders are different than the, the general population. Higher level of anxiety, depression, uh, hmm. suicidal you know, thoughts, and of course ADHD, all of these things. So um, basically, they're more challenging for, in these perspectives. And a startup is something that you're almost constantly in a state of trauma. Why? Because uh, you're you're raising a lot of money now. You you're responsible for all this money. You're hiring a lot of people. Now you're responsible to, to, to pay their salaries. Uh, and then every day there's a new challenge, right? One day, the number one customer that based on that customer, you raise your funding went out of the door. What do you do now? Or your uh, top tech talent just got hired on Microsoft. What do you do? Or you know, it's just these challenges are, are you're facing um, are very uh, condensed. So highs are very high. The lows are very low, um, and usually uh, you don't um, you don't get help. Uh, we did this research together with the group uh, called Startup Startup Snapshot by Yael Benjamin. We we did this research um, and we found that sixty percent of founders don't take get any help. Only about ten percent mm-hmm. will go to their VC to get help. And another interesting piece is, <laughs> which was surprising to me, as the younger they go the stigma is higher of getting uh, professional help, which I found very surprising. Um, so this is this critical. I took it as a personal journey to build um, discipline, a, 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 a therapeutical discipline for helping founders. I'm, I'm doing my psychotherapy MA on top of what my daily work, uh, just to be able to, to know what I'm talking about. Um, and it's it's interesting. My trigger was a friend that sat in my office, a 35 year old guy, just raised 100 million dollars, and and he he said, Zach, I'm collapsing. You know, I have a six month year old uh, d- uh, daughter. I'm separating from my wife, and I used to manage 12 people. I don't know how to manage 300 people. So, and I asked him, do do you go to therapy? And he said, I tried. She doesn't get me. So I think there's there's room for VCs to understand that their founders need that help and for founders to realize there's nothing bad about taking help. Every professional athlete is getting help. Sure, yeah, of course. So is that something that then you, is an important component at Intel Ignite? It's a piece of the program. So for example, we have um, something that the team Intel have we've integrated is the founder spouse. So apparently one of them, uh, only people you go to 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 get advice or get support is your uh, significant other. Mm-hmm. So we have, actually have a session that's focused on home and whoever is supporting you at home and how do you make sure you support them well. So it's a, it's an issue we 
we deal with. We've um, so in every one of our programs, we're dealing it in a in a bit of a different way. But yeah, it's it's part of what we do in the program as well. Thinking through the mental health piece of the founders. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, it's interesting. Definitely, as you've said, there's information out there, and that it is is an issue. I hadn't realized some of the numbers. I mean, I've I, I work with a lot of uh, tech startups and. Sometimes I'm working with a CEO who that's that's their first time in that role. And they'll talk with me some because I don't work for the company and I'm not engaging with their board. But they'll say, I don't know who to go to to advice. I don't want to ask my board. I look stupid. I got to be careful asking questions of people below me because not I look stupid to them. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's a tough situation. Yeah, we have a session. We have um, part of the program everywhere. We have a session called CEO Dilemma Session, which you could call peer therapy session. We're basically... <laughs> 10 founders from the batch sitting with the MD and one of them usually will open up a tough issue they're dealing with, um, that problem with their co-founder, their um, again, problem with a customer, problem, whatever it is that, that's that's really troubling them and uh, they need help in, in getting through. And and these are some of the, some of them are pretty intense sessions. Yeah. I guess if, if you have the first person to kind of get that, rolling and, and open up and say, I've got this challenge and they get some feedback, then others in the room or in the organization are more likely to kind of say, oh, well, I got something too. So, yeah. okay, good. What is your current role with Intel Ignite? What's the favorite part of your job? What do you love the most? So um, what I love most is what we're doing right now. So right now we're in, in selection period. So we're selecting our full cohorts. So in Munich, in London, in Tel Aviv, and in Boston. And um, it's just seeing the immense, I, you know, IP to people, so many smart people. And they're doing some super, super cool stuff. And I'm this kid in this candy store, looks <laughs> around and sees all these amazing uh, passionate founders building some really cool technology and and we get to pick the ones we want to work with and and uh we work with 80 of these every year it's it's phenomenal so that's that's the part that i enjoy uh, the challenge of of you know so i used to run the, the first program now i run the, all of the programs that we, we have and part of the challenge of being an executive is you kind of you, you don't get to play with the toys enough <laughs> because you have <laughs> A lot of management responsibilities. That's something that just takes me away from from that part that I love to do. So I I try to mentor a few and 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 still work with with the founders, but it's becoming a challenge. Yes, <clears throat> understood. So what's what's ahead kind of for you and and the team that you work with uh, in the coming twelve to eighteen months? Besides yeah, getting your new cohort in and up to speed. Yeah, so so um, one is growth. You know, we're in four locations right now. Uh, we will grow um, in the future. So you know, where do we go next? What makes sense? Uh, you know, so that's um, that's one thing. <clears throat> the second thing um, is how do we increase the impact? Uh, of course, on the startups um, through business opportunities, but also at Intel. So we just we just launched a program called Cab which is our customer advisory board. And we said, look, we built this asset that looks at about 2,500 new early stage startups around the world. There are hundreds of, you know, Fortune 500 companies um, that would love to have access to these disruptors. So how do we make them available? Uh, both sides, startups would love to get access to them. They would love to get access to these selected companies. So. A um, uh, uh, big item is is this value creation. How do we build that business bridge between these top tech leaders that are willing to pay for early stage uh, technology mm -hmm. and and the startups um, and and the Intel impact? How do we impact our roadmap? How do we impact our business models? How do we impact uh, the business of of Intel? Um, um, there was a fascinating exercise that our CEO has has done with our group of executives. He gave us a piece of paper and said, I want you to write on, on the piece of paper, five years from now, I'm going to call you and I'm going to thank you for something. What is it going to be that I'm going to thank you for? Mm -hmm. Right. So you, you have an opportunity to write what is the biggest impact you're going to make at, on the company five years from now, and then being thanked by the CEO for making that, that impact. So that's a, 
that's a super interesting way to look at that as well. Mm -hmm. It is a different way to yeah present that that question. So well, it sounds like you'll you'll be keeping busy and doing some some exciting things. I, I can see where it would be nice that you select your eighty people for your cohort, but of the others, yeah, if there's other matches out there, other companies, you can help a win win for for both sides. That's great. Sure. What uh, I read a lot of books, and and you already mentioned one to, or one author, uh, Michael Freeman. What is a is that one of the favorite books you've read lately, or is there something else that you really enjoyed? So uh, I'll, I'll divide my answer into two, two things. One okay. is um, when I hire people, they have no choice; they have to sit down and listen to what I have to tell them. <laughs> but um, one of the like the the uh, models I use. So you know Adam Grant. I think Adam Grant is a great, uh, great uh, um, psychologist or um, social psychologist, and and he has a book called Give and Take, and he divides he on on that book he talks about the givers and takers in the world, and he puts people on a two by two matrix where uh, you have the givers and takers, and then agreeable disagreeables, and. I try to hire only people that are in this giver disagreeable box, which means they're always saying yes. They'll start with yes. It may be complex, it may be hard to achieve, but they'll start with yes. And the second is they may not disagree. They may not agree with the way that you see the solution. They may push mm -hmm. back. They may have you know different way of doing things. But but. So, so I love I love his writing, and you know I think specifically this book has influenced the way I hire and 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 work with people. So that's that's one. Mm -hmm. And second, there's um uh, a, a book I I just uh, read lately. Um, and I told you that this whole phenomenon of mental health, uh, especially with founders, is I think important. And there's a it's not a new book. It's called the Skin the Skin Ego. And it's by a French psychologist named Didier Onzier. And, and it's, um, I think it's fascinating. Uh, and it, it really talks about, you know, trauma and how the, how the body you know, participates and the fact that the skin is a psychic envelope and uh, the importance of tactile experiences in the body and, and the way we you know, we operate, we, we go through things, the emotional regulation and containment that we go through, uh, the, the whole interplay between physical and psychic, um, and, and when, when it just become pathological and you need to get really get help. So I think that's interesting to, 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 uh, observe and, and, you know, I, I get the opportunity to see so many founders and it's interesting to see body language. How do people, when you ask them certain questions, how do they uh, react and what does that mean? So it, again, it's, it's, this is a book from a very different uh, different category. It's not, you know, business management technology, mm -hmm. but I think these these things are critical. Absolutely. Yes, I will. I, I haven't read either of those, so I will get those on my list and I'll get uh, links and titles and everything in the show notes uh, for the listeners in case they want to do those. And also mention uh, Michael Freeman uh, link there in case people want to learn more about, about his work. So, um, so our time's kind of running out for today. I could think of a lot more things to talk about, but uh, this has been very valuable and I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. I'm sure some of the listeners will want to learn more or reach out uh, to learn more about Intel Ignite or more about you. What's the best way for them to reach out and contact you or, or some a program manager? Yeah, so it's very easy. So first of all, there's IntelIgnite.com is our website and it's, it's, and we're all approachable on all of the digital platforms, uh, you know, from X to to LinkedIn to uh, any any other platforms. And and if if they're up and they you know they're not down for any technology reason, uh, we'll be we'll be on these platforms. And <laughs> and uh, um, and it's really easy to get hold of us. Okay, well, I'll get uh, links there. The the Intel Ignite uh, link as well as uh, LinkedIn, a couple of the others, just to make it easy for the listeners. So. I love this call. We talked about some great stuff and I learned a lot about the, the Intel Ignite and, and what you're doing. And I know it's valuable to the listeners. So I thank you for your time and I'll let you get back to your activities. Thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate it. And and good luck to all of our listeners with their, with their ventures and, and what they're trying to do to the world. Yeah, thank absolutely. Thanks.